Hey everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on how to make custom shaped fireworks. Before we start, I must say that this particular effect was quite challenging, uh, and it's it's actually much harder than I thought it would be. So for those of you who are newbies in Houdini, uh, it can cause some difficulties, but it it just consists of a bunch of steps a bunch of subtle steps that you should follow. So let's start by dropping geometry node and uh, diving in. And we'll create just one point. We don't need a surface or something like that, we just need one point. And it will be our emitter. So let's create pop network and change it to points, we don't have surface. Um, let's see if it works. It does. Points are emitted. But they're not moving, so let's make them move by modifying the velocity. We want them to go straight, so we remove variance and make it straight up. Uh-huh. Too many. As you see, there are too many of them. So we need like three maybe, three per second. Yeah. Okay, now let's modify its velocity. It's uh, well, just straight, too straight. So let's drop point wrangle, actually pop wrangle, and uh, modify it. We need to add another vector to our existing velocity. And that would be not a usual vector, we're going to randomize its x-axis. So instead of writing a, a, an integer or a float value, I'm just going to type in uh, rand id, because we're going to randomize uh, it, uh, the id attribute. And then I actually think we can do it like this, can we? Uh, I think it should be better. Yeah. Uh, you see, it's working. It's working fine. But wait, let me find a good angle. Yeah. The thing is that it's uh, going only along positive uh, towards positive values. You see, here, but not here. Yeah, uh, we can change it by using uh, using fit fit zero one because random uh, function gives us values between zero and one, and we are changing its range. So instead of zero and one, it will be minus point seven to point seven, and now it will. Yeah, you see it's going here as well. Uh, the only thing, it's I think it's too fast. So let's just create this uh, another slider. Channel float and uh, it's just a value that would determine our speed. Yeah. That works. Uh, I think also I want to normalize this vector so that it has a uniform length and uniform scalar speed. Yeah, it's good. So we did it. Um, now let's uh, create our shapes. Yeah? Well, let's uh, start with just test geometry. Rubber toy. We need to scatter points on it. And uh, actually, let me quickly explain the logic about it. So first, first I'm going to uh, well scatter points on onto our our shapes, our geometry, and. Uh, well, I think I'm going to use this thing. 
to better visualize what I'm going to do. This is our rubber toy. I'm really bad at drawing. Sorry in advance. And uh, I'm going to create this point. Centroid. It will be at the center of our geometry. So, um, after this, I'm going to put... Oh, also, I forgot to do this thing. Um, scattered points. So, it has a lot of scattered points. Yeah, a thousand. After this, after creating this point uh, at the center of this geometry, I'm going to put all of these scattered points into this point. All of them. After this, I'm going to calculate the velocity, the spherical velocity. That will go like this. So the particles will move like this. I hope it's clear, but uh, I'm sure you will understand right now because I'll show you what I'm going to do. So, as I said, a bunch of scattered points, a thousand. Then let's create, let's find the centroid of our geometry and put a point in the center. Again, we're using this add node. Let's create our point. Uh, you see, I'm I'm uh, changing the values by uh, moving the the slider, uh, but we need to put it at the center. How can we do it? We can use the centroid function. Just tap in centroid. Then surface node, we need the surface node. Uh, this is test geometry, rubber toy. Then, um, of course, the axis, which is x in our case. Uh, this field is for y axis, so we copy and paste and just change it to y here. Is the z axis. Yeah, we did it. Let's see where the point is. Uh, actually, let's. You see, its number is a thousand. This is what we need to know. Okay, let's memorize it. Now, let's drop point vop. And in the point vop, as I previously said, we'll put all of these points into this a uh, thousand point. A <laughs> uh, point with the number thousand. So, uh, to do this, uh, we need to get the the position information about uh, this point with the number 1000. We can do it by using import point attribute. And here, point number, we create a constant and type in 1000. We did it. Okay, let's now plug it into position. As you see, all of the points are moved into this thousand point. Now let's calculate the velocity. We can do it by simply subtracting this one and this one. Let's plug it in velocity um, to see if everything works or not. Let's create pop network. And here choose uh, points. Oh, also don't forget we have we have scattered a thousand points. So in the pop network we must disable constant activation, of course, and impulse count must equal to a thousand, and we must emit all of the points at the first frame. You can do it by writing dollar ff equals one, and it's working. We can get rid of this pop network, we don't need it anymore. Okay, now uh, we've created this, this spreading explosion effect. So right now we also have this pop network with these particles. So what I'm going to do is right before these particles die, I want to copy the this geometry to the points that are about to die. To do this, obviously, we need to know the frame when the points die. 
it's actually quite tricky to figure out, but I'm sure we can handle this. Okay, let's dive in this pop network and uh, here in the birth tab, we can see this thing, just born group. So Houdini can create a group with just born particles for us. Let's go birth. Okay. Now let's uh, create another pop wrangle. Oh, also let's just uh, rename this one, the first one. It's a uh, trajectory because it controls the trajectory. Sorry. Hope I spell the correct. Oh. Did I mess something up? Odd. Okay. <laughs> so, um, let's continue. Here, we choose our birth group and we want to memorize, um, we want to memorize the frame when our particles are born. So let's create, for this we can create an attribute called uh, birth and it will equal to frame number. Let's check this out if it works or not. Geometry spreadsheet and geometry. Um, okay, seven, you see, seven. Um, wait. Yeah, you see? seventh frame and it is born okay this one tenth so it's working it does what we want it to and it's good okay now we need another pop wrangle okay here in um, this pop wrangle node in this one, uh, we need to calculate how many frames a particle has lived. So to do this, we can simply type in frame life, and we do this: frame minus birth. So current number of frame minus the frame when the particle was born equals to how many frames a particle has lived. Let's see and let's check if it's correct. Um, frame life 5, it was born uh, at the 4th frame and right now it's the ninth. 5 plus 4 equals 9. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's really good. Now, let's go next and um actually calculate another thing. Um we want to find right now we want to find out life in frames. So, we already have the life attribute which is here. Oh, and um <laughs> uh, Let's decrease the life expectancy to 2.3 and well, increase the life variance. Um, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, we have uh, our life attribute which shows our life, but in seconds we want to convert it to frames and we can do it. Uh, for this, we create another uh, float attribute. Let's call it amount death equals so we need to multiply life attribute by fps our fps which is which can be received by just writing dollar fps yeah it works here because it's a static static expression it it brings static values that's the reason Okay, we did it. Uh, right now, uh, right now we need to round it up. 
because uh, if we check this attribute, let's find it. You see, it, it gives us float values, which you know we want make, to make them integer because again, it will spoil our further cal calculations. So let's write cer some certain logic to uh, round it up. Okay. If mount death um, equals uh, oh sorry if mount death minus floor um, amount death is greater than zero point five then uh, I actually should copy f mount that because we'll <laughs> tap this in a lot of times then f amount death equal oh, we just need to seal it if it's greater than 0 0.5 uh, we seal it and uh, if it's not greater than 0 0.5 we type it else we need to floor it floor yes okay we've rounded up good um, right now we can find out the death frame let's, so let's create death attribute let's, let's just call it death and uh, let's step in this f at amount death plus f at birth okay good I think it's working um, and right now we need to create uh, a point group so um, if our current frame number equals uh, the death value but oh sorry not capital obviously uh, but minus one if you remember we need to emit uh, these uh, to explode to do these explosions right before the death so minus one we create a point group if it happens set point point group yeah zero we type in zero because it's our geo handle the name let's call it born uh, then ptnum because all of these attributes work with ptnum Unfortunately, if you type in ID, it's gonna spoil everything. And one because we add points to our group. Okay, and um, another thing we need to type in else because if um, if it's not um, if it's not if a frame is not equal to this, we don't want our points to be in this group. Oh, we can actually just copy this thing. Right. Like this. And change it to zero because we delete points from it. And don't forget about the uh, semicolon. Okay, we did it. Yes. Let's check if it works. Let's find out this frame right before their death. Oh my god, they live so long. And they're gonna die. Okay, finally. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, it's working. 
Let's see. Oh, I think I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, yeah, make sure you disable jitter birth time. Because again, it spoils our calculations. Disable it. And uh, let's also increase our simulation substeps to two, because f uh, later it will affect us, uh, affect the simulation. Uh, okay. Uh, let's find this. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's created. So let's. Uh, check it let's uh, create copy two points do like this <clears throat> and uh, let's choose the birth group oh sorry born born it should be born uh -huh, you see it gets created but we need pop network another pop network Let's set it to points, and uh, here we don't need a constant activation. We need impulse count and make it a thousand. Uh, yeah, that that's happening because of the inherited velocity. We don't want our particles to inherit velocity from this pop network. We only want them to have this one. So let's remove the velocity that we don't need. Um, we can do it by using this node, attribute delete v. Uh -huh. It's working. Wait, let's visualize our particles. Uh huh, you see some of them disappear and uh, they uh, don't emit uh, the geometry. We can fix this. We can. I'm sure we can. <laughs> so. <laughs> How do we do it? Um, we just need to do this. We need to, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you why it happens first. Um, here they're flying. Let's find out the, the particles that are not really working well. Let's, let's see. Wait. Mm -hmm. This one disappears, and this one too. Zero, okay. Let's see. It's... Uh, death frame is... Oh, <laughs> you see it's 88.5. That's why we need also to floor it. Let's type in floor frame. That's one problem. Is it fixed now? Let's actually see here. Uh, it is, yeah, it is fixed. But we're gonna do one more thing because you guys might have another problem. Because uh, this rounding up process is quite, quite bad but we can fix this if we type in this thing if frame equals our death attribute that we just calculated that uh, gives us uh, our death frame we do this dead it's the attribute that Houdini has by default equals one. So we forcefully destroy our 
particles. You just might have uh, another problem, but I don't have it f for some reason. I just did it just in case. You know. um, you see, it's working. It's working well. Okay, let's go next. Um, actually, to be able to see the, this, the the particles that fly, let's do this null and uh, create another geo container. Object merge and find this null. Let's find it. It's here. Now we're able to see it. Yes. Good, good, very good. Okay, I think I think it's time to create trails. Yeah, we can do it here in this pop network by uh, using pop replicate node, pop replicate. And since we want t our trails to emit only from uh, these the particles from this source, this source. We need to create uh, to put uh, plug it in as a reference stream. Okay. Now what we can do is first let's decrease the life expectancy and constant birth rate to let's say a hundred. Oh, no? hundred. Yeah. Here also oh, let's also connect it here to be able to see them. Uh huh. Not really good because we don't want our own velocity. We want it to be like this. And uh, of course the shape should be point because we want them to emit from the point. Much better, don't you think so? Yes, good. Uh, live variance, let's increase it slightly as well. Okay, that's really good. We created our uh, trails. Now, uh, let's say you want to have a few shapes, not just this uh, rubber toy, but let's say pig head. Yeah, pig head. Uh, we need to copy everything that we've created here and connect the pig head to it. Uh, to have two shapes we simply need a variant attribute. To create it we first merge all of them, both of them, and let's create this attribute for both of, this, uh, of the branches. We create it with point wrangle so, we type in i variant uh, at variant equals zero. Then we'll copy it, and this one will equal one. Good. Now here in the copy to points node, we need to enable piece attribute and write the name of our piece attribute, which is variant. But it's not all. Uh, in this branch, we need to uh, to randomize this, this thing. <laughs> uh, there are two ways. First, I'll show you the classic. Uh, it's done by attribute adjust integer. Wait. Here it is. It's already set to variant. Uh, the only thing we need to change is this pattern type to random and maximum value to one because we have zero and one. We have only two geometries. Let's say, uh, let's see what it does. Um, well, actually, I think it's working. We see so many pig heads. So many pig heads. And where are the rubber toys? Here they are. But 
there are too many pickets. That's because, again, this one works with PTNUM. We don't want this to work with PTNUM. I recommend you strongly recommend you to use another uh, way. We can um, create point blob and um, make it make this attribute work with ID. We just uh, randomize our ID attribute. Then we um, round it. There's a very cool now round to integer. And we make this float already rounded value into integer. And of course we need to bind export this attribute. We'll call it variant and it is an integer attribute. Uh, also if you have more than uh, two geometries you need to fit it. You drop fit node, uh, leave source uh, values by default and uh, change destination max. Right now it's one but if you have three geometries you change it to two if it's four, three and so on. I think you got the idea. But we have only two. Let's see how it works. Big hat, big hat, rubber toy. Rubber toy. Much better, I think. So let's uh, actually leave it like this. Okay, good. Now, um, another thing that we might want to do is to rotate them along uh, the... V, I mean, well, they, they are just um, emitted and uh, the rotation is still, it's uh, the V attribute doesn't affect it, so we can change it. Uh, we can change it by going here and uh, creating a pop-up. So in the pop-up, um, we need this node called make instance transform, which creates a um, transform matrix. Uh, here we will need the V attribute, put it here, and check use velocity. Now, since it's a four dimensional matrix, we need to convert it to three dimensional matrix. Four to matrix three. And this one can be converted to quaternion. Matrix 3 to quaternion. And this one is... We can just export it, call it orient. Orient it should be four floats vector. Let's see if we changed anything. Uh, it's rotated in a weird way. That's because we uh, need to rotate it along the x-axis by 90 degrees. Let's check it now. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, they're too small, I think. Let's increase the size as well. better much better okay good very good now um, we can um, we can do this thing um, if you take a look closely at this um, this trail you'll see that it is it keeps emitting the particles while we we already uh, emitted the the geometry we don't want this to happen and we can fix this we can fix this here uh we can uh create a group uh let's bring the pop wrangle node and create this group um, so, 
well, this is what we can do. We can type in if attribute death minus, no, actually it's f attribute death minus uh, the current frame number is greater than uh, one. Then we need to set the point group. Set point group, which is gonna be called um, flight. Let's call it flight, and it will again work with BT num one. Okay, good. Uh, also, uh, we need to do this else we want to delete these points if it doesn't match our condition uh, okay we need to go here uh, oh <laughs> I forgot to do the main thing I forgot to choose this group here Let's enable this and uh, choose the flight group. You see, it's working and it's great. Okay, there's not a lot of the stuff left, honestly. Um, okay, now I think we need to do a few things. So let's colorize them. Let's colorize our particles. Uh, first, let's uh, pop color, put it here, and uh, do random, just random colorization. Um, then for this stream, I'm going to use ramp. And here, I will type in 1 minus NH because as the particles age, I want them to uh, get darker. Yeah. And uh, let it be brown, brownish. Yeah. Like this. Let's, we can uh, tweak it, you see. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Also, a few more things. One thing is, yeah, you see, <laughs> it's working. One thing is that um, right after these, uh, the fireworks explode, uh, its speed is not constant. It changes, it decreases. You know, so we need to, to do the same thing. We need to decrease its speed, and we need to do it here in the second pop network using pop wrangle again. Yeah, I know. I think uh, it's already become your best friend or <laughs> uh, the greatest enemy. Okay, uh, so we can um, we need to modify the velocity. So this is what we do. Uh, we need to slightly change it. We do this thing. Multiply it by NH. Uh, but we don't want it to increase as the time goes. We want it to decrease. We can uh, do it by fitting this thing. Uh, fit zero 01 because it's a normalized attribute NH. And uh, one, and let's say uh, zero for now. Let's see what it does. Uh -oh. uh, it's not what I want. We can play around with the values. And oh, this one actually works the best. I figured out it for myself that it's the best thing. Yeah, you see, very smooth stop, 
this is what I wanted. Okay, and the last, hopefully it's the last thing for today, it's um, fading effect. So we want the particles to also fade. Um, again, another, guess what, pop wrangle. Of course. So, uh, we are modifying, right now we're modifying the color attribute. So we're going to do similar procedure. Uh, we do, um, yeah, let's create ramp and uh, let's call this ramp fade. And this ramp will control uh, normalized age. Again, same stuff. Let's create it, and um, uh -huh. that's because we need to reverse it. Uh -huh. Right, but it's too quick. So, like this, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe slightly less, like this. Okay, yeah, it's working well. Let's uh, see our final result. I think we can increase their size even more. They're too small for my taste. It's working. Okay guys, I hope this tutorial was useful. If you find any other more efficient way than this one, because this one is quite, quite complicated, I must admit, please share it with me. I'll be glad to know it. Goodbye. Hey guys, um, I've just figured out the way we can optimize our scene. Um, here we will change this particular node, but let's just copy it and leave this one here. Um, okay, so this piece of code can be replaced with a shorter one. Uh, but before this, let's copy this line and delete it. Delete this piece of code. Let's paste it, and instead of writing floor function, we will write our int. So what it does is the same stuff as the previous code did. Uh, it, well, if f amount of death minus floor f amount of death is greater than 0 0.5, it uh, seals it. And if it's not, if it's less than 0 0.5, it flows it. And it takes only one line. Cool. Uh, let's check if it works. Yeah, as you see, I've uh, changed the mesh to uh, words, but it's the same, same setup.